Are you curious about becoming a veterinarian? Or perhaps you're considering a career as a vet yourself? Maybe you've wondered, how long does this process take? What subjects are studied? Do they have to specialize? When do they start working on animals? And how much this all costs? Well, I'll be answering those questions and more in this complete guide on how to become a veterinarian. My name is Keith and I'm a fourth year veterinary student at the University of Florida. I am well on my way through this process. I've also consulted with some of the most up-to-date research on getting into vet school. Starting off, getting experience is the first thing on the step to becoming a veterinarian. Veterinary experience is crucial to get accepted into vet schools. In fact, some vet schools require 250 hours or more of required experience working with animals or in the veterinary field before they can even consider your application. And usually this takes the place of working or volunteering in local clinics or animal shelters or other jobs working with animals. The process of educating a veterinarian takes place over two different degrees and two different programs. In total, it's about eight years. So the first degree is usually a bachelor's degree in a natural science, such as biology, chemistry, animal sciences. A lot of these degrees align well with the prerequisites to get accepted to vet school. There are certain classes you need to take no matter what major you have in order to apply for vet school, and these majors already contain most of them. The second part is a four-year veterinary degree. Gaining accepted into a veterinary school is super competitive and super challenging. The most recent class had about an 11 to 19 percent acceptance rate and a mean average GPA of 3.5 out of 4.0. Now on top of this, to get accepted to vet school you also have to have lots of great experiences, you have to have leadership skills, you have to have a great letter of recommendation. There's a lot of things. If you want to learn more, you can check out this video where I give you eight tips on what I would do today if I was trying to get into vet school. There's no specific test to get into veterinary school. However, there's still about eight schools right now that require the GRE in order to get accepted. It's important to look up the requirements for each veterinary school before you apply. Once you get accepted to vet school, the curriculum can vary school by school. Some schools will focus mostly on case-based learning, reverse classroom type education, and other schools will have a more traditional lecture style. I went to the University of Florida and they have a more traditional lecture style, so I'll be speaking mostly about that. Year one is usually where you start focusing on the basics, basic physiology, basic systems, and you learn what is normal or healthy. So a lot of these school a lot of these classes are very similar to what they teach in human medicine. Year two is where you start focusing more on the abnormal or the sick. Where year one was the normal, now you start to learn what happens when things are not right. So you start to learn to diagnose, you start to learn to look for some of these diseases. You'll take your basic radiology classes. You'll also take a clinical pathology class where you'll start to look at blood work for the first time. So you'll start to understand how to diagnose some of these diseases. You'll also take a basic pharmacology class where you'll learn different medications, what they do and what they can start to treat. Throughout these first two years, you're also gonna be put in labs. These labs are mostly to focus on your clinical skills. So things like putting in catheters, drawing blood. There's also some labs about communication skills where you're forced to speak to each other about difficult conversations and topics. Now at the end of your second year at the University of Florida, we have our first surgery lab. So we're gonna do surgery as a student on an animal. So this is gonna be a castration, a spay or neuter, and it's usually done on a dog. You'll split into groups and there usually be about three of you. You'll have one person being the surgeon, another person being an assistant surgeon, and then another student monitoring anesthesia. So they all get to focus on each different part, and then you rotate. You'll have three sessions. Going into your third year is when you start your clinical rotations. Clinical rotations, or referred to as clinics, are basically two to four week blocks where you rotate in a large hospital, usually at your veterinary school, and you'll rotate through different departments. 
So some of the departments include medicine, surgery, oncology, dermatology, cardiology, neurology, and those all, there's also a small and a large animal side to the hospital. At this point, a lot of schools will also allow students to focus on either large animal, so mostly horses and cows, or small animal, dogs and cats. And from here on out, you'll take mostly rotations based on that side of the hospital, large or small. You'll also take some upper level classes specifically for those types of animals. During our clinical rotation, there's also some time to take some upper level classes as well as go on some externships. So an externship is basically a rotation that you organize by yourself outside of the main hospital. So this is usually taking place at a small private practice. Uh, you'll go, you'll email the people or you'll know them beforehand. You'll organize these. This experience, these externships, help to show vet students what the majority of veterinary medicine is like. Working in a university hospital, it can tend to be very textbook perfect medicine. And it's often referred to as ivory tower medicine, where your general practitioner will practice a different type of medicine that's a lot more practical and a lot more attainable for most people. These externships also work as an opportunity for some students to be able to have a type of working interview. So they'll take these externships at places they wanna work for after, and they get to work there for a couple of weeks, they get to meet them at my veterinary school. The first semester of your fourth year is when you study for the licensing exam, which is called the NAVLI, which stands for the North American Veterinary Licensing Exam. Now this is a seven and a half hour test that is 360 questions consisting of treatment and diagnosis of a variety of animals, including dogs, cats, horses, cows, pigs, sheep, monkeys, armadillos, and more. It's a very hefty test and most students will start to study about three to six months out from the exam. The last year of vet school is usually spent rotating through the hospital through your last rotations and clinics before graduating. Now, overall, the cost of all this education. The average veterinary student last year, the data was collected, had an average debt of $190,000. Now, this is because going to vet school, depending on if you're in state or out of state on your residency status, it'll be about $150,000 to $250,000. Now, with a doctorate in veterinary medicine, you can begin practicing on a variety of animals, medicine and surgery of whatever you're comfortable with. And most students will go into general practice and have mentorship from the vets around them. There is a small amount of veterinarians that choose to go into specialization. And specialization can take anywhere from one year for a basic internship to six years to a hefty residency program. During this time, you're getting paid thirty dollars to $40,000 and you're also working about 40 to 80 hours a week. While most human doctors will go through residency, in veterinary medicine, there's only a small amount of vets that choose to go through this process. There's also some differences in this process between human medicine. For veterinarians, you will have a one-year rotating, rotating internship where you basically, it's like your last few years in clinics. You're going through a large hospital, every two to four weeks you switch off and do a different rotation. But this time you have a bit more responsibility and the cases are your own. After your internship, you'll apply for a residency program. And now this is specific to what you wanna specialize in. So it could be surgery, internal medicine, neurology, cardiology. There are a ton of different specialties. So applying for all this is through a match process. The way this works is students will rank a bunch of programs and then every program that they've applied to will rank all of their applicants. And it's on a website, it's through the Veterinary Internship and Residency Match Program, the VERMP. And one day the algorithm will put everybody together and release all the results at once. This is also the same in human medicine as they apply for residencies. Becoming a veterinarian is a rigorous, lengthy, extensive, and expensive process. 
lasting at least eight years, consisting of two different programs, and costing around $190,000. If you want to specialize, that's going to be an additional four to six years after that eight years. I hope this information has been helpful and have helped you consider if you want to choose a path in veterinary medicine. I absolutely love this field and I'm very excited to start practicing in the next few months. If you want to learn more about veterinary medicine or my journey, please feel free to check out some of my other videos. And if you like what you saw, please feel to like and subscribe. I look forward to seeing you in my next video.